thank you for joining us for uh, another just informational session throughout OU Wellbeing Awareness Month. This one is Ask the Trainer or Ask a Trainer. So have um, Sean Ogle, a certified personal trainer from the HSC University Health Club there on the Oklahoma City campus, joining us today to really kind of, you know, if, if you're new or unfamiliar with uh, exercise, using gym, using a certified personal trainer, what all that means. Um, you know, he's really here to help answer those questions, kind of navigate through all that stuff and um, kind of put our minds at ease a bit because it can be a little intimidating, a little overwhelming. Yeah. So uh, Sean, thank you for joining us today. First of all, please just kind of introduce yourself a little bit about you, your background um, and how you kind of got into personal training. Okay, so um, my name is Sean Ogle. I am the fitness specialist here at the University Health Club. Uh, kind of have my background a little bit. Um, I've been a soccer player my whole life. Uh, I played collegiate soccer at Rose State College and played for the OU club team when I was going to school there as well. Um, so how I kind of got into training. Um, so I started as a graduate assistant working on my master's degree at the uh, at the OU Norman. Um, and my graduate assistantship was actually on the OU Health Sciences Center campus. Um, so I ran all the intramural sports on campus. Um, and then I met Kelly Spellman, who is our director at the health club here. Um, and she wanted to know if I was interested in a fitness specialist position. So um, that's kind of how I got into this position. Um, as for training, um, like I said, I've been a coach, just player for a long time. I've been around strength conditioning professionals for a pretty good amount of my life. Um, and so I kind of just rolled, got the ball, ro ball rolling over here. Um, we have two actual full-time fitness specialists that are trainers. That's me and Lindsay Pettis. And then our uh, facil senior facility manager, Brian Phillips, he's also a part-time trainer. He has a lot of stuff on his plate. So he kind of jumps in and trains whenever we have a chance. So um, yeah, so that's pretty much me. Excellent, thank you. And so, I mean, what's the benefit of using a certified personal trainer or what is a certified personal trainer? I mean, there's with social media there. I mean, there's a lot on Instagram to get, you know, tips and tricks as far as exercise goes. I mean, that would be perfectly good to just use someone off of like Instagram, right? They're, they're probably certified personal trainers. Uh, not so much I, there. I will say that there are some that know a little bit about what they're talking about. Um, but it's just like at this point in uh, our world, the internet is filled with a lot of good information and a whole lot of false information. So um, basically one of the benefits of using a certified personal trainer is that we've had the training to know what is safe, the correct exercise technique, um, things of that nature. So when you get on Instagram, when you get on YouTube and kind of look at stuff, some of it could be kind of what you're wanting to look at. Um, but there are a lot of things that one could be not at your skill level to um, not the safest way to do an exercise. Um, so a lot of people that I've met that kind of go through that kind of thing, um, they end up getting injured somehow or they pull something and it strains something. And then that can take a lot of time and demotivate you quite a bit when you start getting back into your workouts. So uh, one of the benefits of having a fitness specialist or certified personal trainer is We've had the training, we've gone to school for it. We know exactly what we're talking about. Um, we have put in our time to know how to progress people, how to regress people, how to work with different skill levels. Um, so me personally, I've worked with people that are ages five, six, seven, uh, all the way up to 75, 70 or 80, all that kind of area. So, and everything in between. So I've worked with athletes. I've worked with people who have never been in a gym before. Um, I have people that have done the whole YouTube route and tried to figure it out themselves and they don't know quite how to put it all together. Um, another benefit would be that intimidation factor that you kind of talked about. So having someone there that knows what they're talking about and has had the training, um, it makes it a lot easier, a lot more digestible to go in instead of just walking into a gym by yourself and have no idea what you're going to start with. And you're just, oh, that machine looks fun. Let's try that one. And then that's kind of how it goes. So yeah. Great. And then, um, so we've been using the word 
uh, the phrase certified personal trainer. Yes. If someone is considering using a personal trainer, what are maybe some questions they should ask? What should they be looking for um, when considering using a personal trainer or certified personal trainer? So one thing is experience. So you might want to ask them how long they've been training, um, how many clients maybe they've had in the past or what kind of clients they've worked with in the past. Um, if you have a if you have a trainer that's not super experienced, maybe one or two years of experience under their belt, um, they might still be kind of learning the process. Um, so you could be a great example for getting that experience going. But um, generally, you want to try to find someone who's done it before, who knows what they're doing, who's had the process. Um, another way is or another question you could ask would be, the type of training that they do, because a lot of cert certified personal trainers have a specific kind of niche that they go into. So some might be strength conditioning specialists, some might be cardio specialists, some might be uh, flexibility. And so everybody, every trainer is going to have a different way to kind of train people. Um, and they'll put an emphasis on more of what they're what they have studied, what they've done in the past. So if that's something that like, if you're wanting to go into strength training, like working on just building strength, just building hypertrophy, um, which would be muscle growth, um, getting those muscles bigger. So you wouldn't want to have a specialist that is kind of more geared toward cardio aspect of it. Um, so they might have uh, general knowledge of kind of the ins and outs of everything, but they don't have that in-depth knowledge of what you want. So you have to kind of advocate for yourself, ask questions. And, and me personally, I love when people ask me questions, which is why I'm here. So um, because one, it educates the people and two, it makes me feel good because I have a client that's going to be verbal with me. That's going to talk to me and ask questions and get to know me a little bit. So um, some other questions you could ask, uh, what organization they're certified through. Um, there's NSCA, there's uh, ACSM, there's ACE. Uh, there's all kinds of different organizations that do personal training certifications. Um, so one of the one of the big ones, make sure that they have kind of that uh, that aspect of being in a professional program that certifies you. Wonderful. So it's you're telling me you're encouraging people to ask questions. Yes. That's okay. Please. And do your research on what the certifications are. Correct. Yes. Um, do you have a well? Let me ask real quick. So what type, you mentioned that there's different kinds of personal trainers. So what kind would you say that you are? And then also um, how much roughly could someone expect to spend on personal training? Okay. So me personally, um, like I said, I have a big soccer background, football and soccer are my two sports that I really kind of work with. So um, me specifically, I kind of gear myself more towards resistance or strength training and speed and agility. Um, so a lot of cone drills, ladders, stuff like that. Um, and then as well as free weights, dumbbells, that kind of thing as well. So that's kind of my more niche there. Um, like I said, I could give you a pretty general aspect of cardio stuff. Um, like if you're doing long distance running, uh, training for marathons, stuff like that. Um, but I don't have a like the in-depth knowledge that I've worked with, um, like I have with my athletes, like with my football players and soccer players. Um, now, uh, so having said that, we have, from what I have found, we have one of the cheapest rates for personal training um, at our facility. So we have a package deal that if you buy, uh, it's $25 for half an hour session. Um, and then we have five, tens, twenties packages, and they are discounted as you go up in those packages. Um, I've seen people that charge $60 for half an hour. I've seen people that charge 50, uh, kind of, it can get pretty pricey, especially if you're wanting to do more of a long-term, um, training regimen. So if you're planning on buying $20 worth of personal training sessions, $25 a session sounds a little bit more digestible than $60 a session. So, um, but that can vary all over the place. Um, and then it also depends on how experienced. So sometimes 
not here, but at other places, if you have a more experienced trainer, they could be a little bit more expensive than if you were having someone that was going to be doing um, like not as experienced. So if they've only had like one or two uh, years of experience, they might have a little bit cheaper of a rate um, as opposed to someone who has eight, 10, 12 years of experience, um, then they might have a little bit higher rate sometimes. So. Excellent. So that helps us kind of, you know, keep that in mind of what kind of to expect as far as price range and what all kind of goes in in with that. Right. Excellent. So I had a question come in. So what are some good upper body exercises for an ind individual that cannot bear weight on their legs currently, like maybe an injury or something okay. uh, and may have limited lower body mobility? Okay. Um, so really I recommend, I usually start a lot of my clients on machine weights to just, just to start with, just to kind to, um, kind of get them into a routine. Um, so upper body machine weights usually are strictly upper body. So you don't have to have a ton of mobility in your legs. Um, and it's also a lot of them have instructions on the machines um, that kind of tell you how to go through the machine, uh, how to do it, how to uh, set your weight and that kind of thing. Um, if you were going to start messing around with free weights, um, that kind of gets a little bit more complicated. Um, if you like if you were doing a dumbbell bench press, that doesn't take a ton of mobility and um, anything like that in your lower body. Um, it might be a little bit difficult getting up and down off of the bench, um, something like that. However, um, if you have the mobility to be able to do that kind of thing, so you can do a bench press, you could do an overhead press, which you can do standing, um, all kinds of different band work. Um, so like band pull apart, some different um, like tricep extensions, stuff like that. Most of that you can do standing without having to sit down and get back up. Great information, Sean. Um, so that kind of also helps lead me into um, you know, if you do have maybe some limitations and in injury, I mean, is it actually okay, safe to exercise? Like if you're pregnant or if after you've had a heart attack or if you have arthritis or if you have cancer, I mean, any of those sort of things, is it actually safe or okay to exercise during any of those times? Yes, absolutely. Um, so we actually encourage a lot of those people. I actually had a personal client that I just worked with. She just had a baby about two or three months ago. Um, but I worked with her all the way up until about eight months uh, pregnant. Um, now it will cause your workouts to have to change. So before when me and my client were started working, we were doing a lot of heavy lifting, um, a lot of agility work, um, things of that nature. Now, obviously, when you start having a bigger belly, you can't really kind of do all that kind of stuff. And you don't want to stress the baby out too much. Um, as for like arthritis, that kind of stuff, um, it all depends on what's going on with you. So if you were having arthritis problems, you would want to make sure that you have a lot of um, static training. So a lot of like holds or like pre uh, wall sits or something along those lines where you're not going to be moving those joints a ton. So you're going to be stationary and kind of working on that kind of thing. Um, so a lot of different, and there's a lot of different trainers that work with those special populations as well. So if you're looking at personal training and you have some of those problems, make sure that you ask those questions. So ask questions that, do you have experience training these types of people? Do you have experience um, remediating exercises to benefit the client that you're working with. So, um, but yes, and a lot of people have a misconception that when you get pregnant, you need to stop training. Um, that is absolutely not true. It's actually extremely beneficial for you to, uh, continue working, uh, especially those core muscles, um, as you start to kind of get to the, the kind of later stages of your pregnancy. Um, because it takes, I mean, I don't know personally, but I'm sure other people know personally that it takes a lot of core strength to give birth and go through labor. Um, so we just don't be afraid to kind of ask those questions and to inquire about that kind of thing. Um, cause, and again, on YouTube, there's a lot of misinformation on YouTube. So, uh, just ask the questions, ask when you have the opportunity to ha and you have a professional in front of you, ask the questions. Um, one thing about questions that I have found in uh, being a recruiter, being an academic advisor, um, being a coach, 
write your questions down. Because whenever you get into the moments when you're sitting in front of someone, all those questions go straight out of your mind and you completely go blank. So write your questions down, put it in your notes on your phone, put it in your notebook, something and bring that with you. So you don't have to constantly try to remember all the questions and then never fails. Even if you get a few of your questions out, you always forget one. It's always the most important one that you wanted to, to know. And then you go home and you're like, oh, I forgot to ask that question, blah, 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 blah. So that's one recommendation I would give to really anyone. And that goes for personal training. It goes for the doctor's office. It goes for any person that you're going to be in front of that's a professional. You have questions, just write them down. It's so simple. Yeah, uh, couldn't agree more. I, I know I have to do that even with my grocery list. There's five mm -hmm. things. I think I can remember them all. I get to the grocery store and I only remember two of them. <laughs> so yes, I uh, could not agree more, Sean. And I will say to add uh, my experience as far as um, strength training and being pregnant, I actually uh, did CrossFit all the way up until a week before I delivered my son. Um, so yeah, it is, it's possible as long as you listen to your body, um, yes. you know, keep up with your, your appointments throughout your pregnancy and just have that open conversation with your, with your doctor. And yeah, you're just going to have to kind of start modifying some things, um, depending on what trimester you're in and, and what have you. So, um, yes, I, I can attest to that. Yes, it's absolutely <laughs> possible. Um, and if, if anything, it'll help you even after um giving birth to bounce back a little quicker uh because your body goes through goes through a lot you bet and to build on that um so when after you have your baby after you've done all your pregnancy and everything like that listen to your physical therapist because they are going to sign you a physical therapist and they're going to give you rehab exercises to build those that core muscles back up and everything like that so Listen to your physical therapist, do everything that they tell you, and you will bounce back a whole lot faster than what you would if you were just kind of dilly-dallying around. Excellent. Yes, thank you. Now, if someone was newly getting started, um, as we're kind of winding down here, as new, someone is newly getting started with working out quite possibly, should they plan on working out or exercising every day? Are rest days important? Kind of like what would be a good way to start and kind of some things to keep in mind with getting started with an exercise regimen? So I kind of touched on this a little bit. So generally when I start with my clients, um, unless they're already completely trained and they're just wanting to kind of get some more um, information on kind of what they need to work on, I generally start my, my clients on machine weights. Um, they're simple. They're easy to go through. Um, they have instructions on this. Most of the models have instructions on the side. Um, and that's a great way to kind of go through um, building a routine that uh, you can go through. So a lot of my clients that I work with, those first two weeks, we'll go through machine weight demo. We'll kind of get through them with a routine. Um, and I always tell them, like, if you're wanting to train more during the week, you like say if you have two training sessions with me, We'll do more of the complex movements, the more technical uh, movements. Um, and then you have, if you want to come in on a day on your own, you have this routine that's fairly simple. It's not very dangerous whatsoever. Um, and you kind of have already gone through. Um, so that is a good way to kind of get started. It's like we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier. It's a little intimidating um, walking into a facility and just looking around at all the people um, and kind of starting to just try to come up with a workout on your own. Um, so that's a really good place to start. Um, and, and as you progress, as you get stronger, as you get more comfortable coming to the facility, then you can kind of start experimenting with different things, looking at um how other people do things um that's one thing that i coached for a lot of my soccer players and football players is watch film watch other people how they play um scouting reports all that kind of stuff um so do the same thing here now just be wary that there are people that in the facility that don't do things correctly but you can kind of get a general idea of what uh what the movements are um and then just like, like I said, just be curious, just be just when you come into the facility and it's just, oh, what's that? Was that a stair climber? Um, I've never used one of those before. Kind of watch someone 
go through a stair climber and see how they do it. Um, working with bands, look at how people use bands and that kind of thing. Um, this is one of the, however, this is one of the kind of forks in the road where some people start to kind of get into that YouTube area and like kind of start looking at that kind of thing. So like I said before, it's pretty like it can have some good information on there, but there's a lot of misinformation. Um, so just be wary of that. And if you have trainers, usually for the most part, when you have trainers in your facility, they don't like if you have simple questions, like how to use something really quick, if it takes five, 10 minutes, usually we if we have the time, we we can sit there and just show you and we won't you don't have to buy a whole training package to kind of go through that. So, um, and I encourage all of our members here at the health club to like, if you see me walking around or see Lindsay walking around, um, and you have a question about something, or if you feel like you're going to hurt yourself on something, ask us, please, we would much rather just take five, 10 minutes to show you how to do something, than fill out an incident report and go through all that kind of thing. So, um, so that's kind of where you want to kind of go through that. Um, so like I said, so start out with your machine weights. If you've never been in a gym before, start out with your machine weights, kind of get, get used to that, get used to coming to the gym. So that's, that's one of the main things is, and I tell my clients this all the time. If you are feel like you're unmotivated, you feel like you are having a long day and you just want to go home and relax. Even if you don't work out, come to the facility, go to the, get into the parking lot, walk in, look around. If you still feel like you need to go home or you're like, you're feeling sick, go home. But like, that routine of coming to the facility, getting here and being in the building is going to help you a lot um, in regards to your routine and keeping yourself motivated coming every day. Absolutely. Yeah. I get that question too, a lot about motivation and, you know, how do you stay motivated? How do you get motivation and everything? And yeah, you're absolutely correct. Some days that motivation quite honestly, isn't there. So then you really have to rely on that consistency, those habits that you have started putting in place and really lean in to, into those. So thank you for um, noting that on um, how important that is as well. Well, Sean, I really appreciate your time today. Um, and as we wind this down, <clears throat> kind of scratch the surface a little bit, certainly for those that maybe aren't familiar with exercise or working out kind of what to expect what a certified personal trainer is, what kind of benefits they can have. Um, and so, yes, like Sean said, please do. If you're ever in a fitness facility, they have certified personal trainers around, available, even the staff that works there. Um, it It's not unheard of and it's not a bad thing. It's actually, you know, openly accepted and welcome to, if you have a question, if you're unsure how to use something or where something is or you know maybe what to use if you're trying to work out you know certain body parts upper body lower body ask um hopefully you have found a spot that is a welcoming environment and much rather uh would want you to ask and get that information and the right information and guidance opposed to um, injury and then have those setbacks from injury so Sean, once again, really appreciate you uh, and thank you for your time today. Of course. Absolutely. It was a pleasure.